In the previous lesson, I showed you how to calculate the discriminant. And what we said was that to calculate the discriminant, you need to, let me just write out this quadratic formula, which we've all seen by now. Now the discriminant is this part over here, not the square root included, just that part. Okay, so let's just write that down. Okay, so that's b squared take away 4ac. That is the discriminant. Now, mathematicians like to calculate the discriminant because it tells us some very useful information about the type of answers that we are going to get. And that's what I'm going to be showing you in this lesson. So I'm going to call it the discriminant map. So what you would do is you would go calculate the discriminant. Okay, if you get a negative answer, let's say the discriminant is negative, then what that means is that your answers are non-real, non-real. You could also think of it as imaginary. Okay, so your answers will be non-real. If you get anything else, like maybe you get a zero, or maybe you get any other positive number, okay, zero or anything else that's positive, then that would be real. Okay, so we call that real. Now, within the real, there are different categories that we can have. So if your answer was a zero, exactly a zero, then what that means is that your roots are rational, equal, and so there is only one solution. Okay, and obviously also real, because we said that anything anything going down this way is real. If your answer was something that is a perfect square, so, okay, wait, that's gonna confuse. Let's just quickly say, um, yeah, so here we go. If your answer was zero, then you go this way. If your answer was a perfect square, so let's say here, perfect square. Kevin, what is a perfect square? A perfect square is something like 25, 36, 49, um, 60, uh, 8 times 8, 64, uh, 81, 1 times 1 is 1, 2 times 2 is 4. These are all perfect squares, okay? And there's more. There's, there's thousands of them, but you know what I mean. So those are the perfect squares. So if you get one of those, then your answers are rational. Um, and what else could we say? There will be two solutions. They won't be equal. So they won't be equal, not equal, but they're also real. Okay, and, and this is just something you're gonna have to write down for now, and for now you're gonna have to memorize, but as you practice it, you will start to remember. And then the other category is any other number, so uh, like a number like 17. You know, it's not a perfect square, or 18, or 34. These are not perfect squares. Uh, Kevin, what about a negative number? No, remember the negative number is over here. So we are in this area now where we're getting a zero or anything positive. So maybe 27 or 105. These are not perfect squares. So the answer will be irrational, not rational, irrational. There will be two solutions. They will not be equal, but they are real. Everything here is real. Everything here is non-real, okay? So, let me give you some examples though of this one. So when you, what do we mean when we say that there's only one solution? Well, what you would get is when you go solve, you're only gonna get one answer. You're gonna get like x equals to five. And then when you try to get the other answer, because you know there's always two answers, like plus and minus, you're gonna get, um, okay, wait, let me actually not mention that part now, because that's gonna confuse you. But in the next exam, we're gonna do some examples now, and then you're gonna see what I mean. But what I would advise is that you just write this down so long, and then we're going to go practice now, and you're going to start to see um, exactly what we are talking about. So here's our first example. And so what I want you to do first is to calculate the discriminant, okay? So remember, the discriminant is b squared take away 4ac. But to be able to use that, you have to make sure that your equation is written like this, where there is a zero on the one side. So this negative 5b needs to move over first. So we're gonna end up with b squared, take away 14b, plus 5b, because it goes to the other side, plus five equals zero. And then you end up with b squared, take away 9b, plus five equals to zero. Now you can use the discriminant. So the discriminant is b squared, take away 
AC. So what that means is um, negative 9, but in brackets, eh? negative 9 like that. Take away 4, A is 1, C is 5, and if we had to go calculate this, we end up with 61. Okay, so now that we know the discriminant is 61, this is where the fun begins. This is where we can start to say a few things. So if we now go back to our discriminant map, then let's just remember 61, okay? So is 61 a negative number? No, so we're not gonna go down this way. So we're definitely gonna go down this path. Now, did we get a zero? No, we got 61. Is 61 a perfect square? No, it's not. So that means we're gonna go down here. And so here's all of the different categories that we now have. So it says here, number of solutions. Well, here we said two. There would be two solutions. Are they going to be real or imaginary? We said they would be real. Is it gonna be rational or irrational? It's irrational. And then here we're saying roots. So what I mean by that is, we're actually gonna go solve this thing now and see what our answers look like, and then we can see that they are gonna be exactly as we've said over here. So without even solving, we think about this, we haven't actually solved this equation. All that we've calculated is the discriminant, but we haven't actually solved for the answers. But without even solving for the answers, we already know that we're gonna get two solutions, they're gonna be real, and they are going to be irrational. So I decided to change it from roots to answers. So now we're actually just gonna go solve this. I know a lot of you are like, Kevin, we just did solve it, my bro. We've just solved it. Are you forgetting? And I'm gonna say, no, we didn't solve it. We just went and found the discriminant. We didn't actually go find the answers. Okay, so that's gonna be b squared take away 9b uh, plus five. Now you could try factorize that one, but it's not gonna work. You can only factorize when the answers are rational. Okay, irrational, it just isn't gonna factorize. So we'd rather just use the quadratic formula. And so that's gonna end up giving us, uh, so now we're using this part of here. So, that's, so B is negative nine. So we're gonna say negative, negative nine like that. Uh, in brackets, A is one, C is five. Oh, well, we already went and worked out the discriminant. Remember this B squared minus four AC, 61, right? We already worked that out, okay? And then at the bottom, we're gonna have two times A, which is just two, because it's two times one. Okay, and so what that now gives us is X is gonna be equal to nine plus minus square root 61 over two. And so just go ahead and type it on the calculator. So for the first answer, just put a positive, okay? So if you had to go type in that first answer, you're gonna get, so I'm saying nine plus square root 61 over two, and that's gonna give us 8,41 if you round it to two decimal places. But have a look at how long those decimals go on for. Though That's called an irrational number. Um, a rational number, the decimals would have stopped, or they would have repeated. But look at that, those numbers just go, they keep going. It's, it's eight, let me write it down quickly. It's eight comma four oh five one two four eight eight, and it just keeps going on and on and on. So that's why we call it irrational. And then we've got a second answer. Remember we said there are gonna be two answers. Um, now we're gonna put a minus. So same thing on the calculator, but just putting a negative instead. And that gives us 0, 0,59. 0, 0,59. So have a look at this. We've got two answers. Ah, that's what we said. Number of solutions, two. Are they real? Yep, those are real numbers. And are they irrational? Yes, they have these ugly decimals, and the decimals just keep going on and on and on. That is the definition of an irrational number. You see, so by using the discriminant, we were able to tell a lot about the quest, the answers that we would get without even having to go calculate them. Here's our next example. So step one, we need to make sure that this looks normal. So remember, you want it to be written as ax squared plus bx plus c, and then on the other side, you would like it to have a zero. So that's gonna be nine n squared, take away 17 n plus eight n, take away one equals to zero. 
And then we'll just put the negative 17 and the 8 together. So that becomes 9n squared take away 9n take away 1. Now we can go calculate the discriminant, which remember is b squared take away 4ac. So that's going to be negative 9 squared take away 4. Now a is 9, c is negative 1. And if you had to go calculate that, I would just throw that all on the calculator. It's going to give us 100. And 17. Okay, so our discriminant was 117. Now the number of solutions, so if we go back to our map, um, if you get 117, it's this category again, where it's not a it's not a negative number, it's not a zero, it's not a perfect square. So then it has to be this one. So it means that um, we're gonna get irrational, two solutions, and real. So we're gonna get two solutions, they real. And we said irrational. And then I could actually add another tab here that says equal or not. And we would say that they are not equal. Because if we go here, um, and I'm going to show you an example just now, or <laughs> there I say just now again. I know that in America, just now confuses people, whereas here in South Africa, it means something else. Okay, so let me not say that. So um, slightly later in this video, I will be showing you an example where the roots are equal. Okay, but here it says not equal. So we could add that in, um, equal or not. We'll say that they're not equal. Now we're actually going to go and solve this equation. So I'm going to take it from here, and I'm actually going to go solve this equation. Now some of you might be saying, Kevin, haven't we solved it already? But remember, this is the discriminant. What I mean by solving is we're actually going to go find the answers now. So the discriminant is just the discriminant just tells us about the answers, but it doesn't tell us what the answers are. We need to go find that ourselves. So for for so I'm using this equation over here right now. So for b, it's negative nine. So that's going to look like that. And then here we're going to have okay. So the discriminant was 117. So I'm just going to fill that in because this is the discriminant. And then at the bottom we have. Uh, 2 times a. Now a is uh, 9. Okay, and then go ahead, just go type that all in on your calculator. Use a plus for the first one, and then use a minus for the second one, or a negative. And that's going to give you 1.10. Look at all those ugly decimals though. Can you see that? Make sure you see that. It's ugly decimals. That's why we say it's irrational. And then the second one, um, the second answer is negative 0 0.10. But look at all those decimals that you can see on your calculator. So those are ugly answers, which we call irrational. We've got two more examples coming up. So, um, so it's this one and then the next one. So let's go get the discriminant first. But remember, to get the discriminant, we first have to rearrange all of this. So into the form ax squared plus bx plus c equals to 0. And so... To get the discriminant, we use the formula b squared take away 4ac. So we first need to go rearrange this, though, because we need to have a 0 on the other side before we can use this formula. So that's going to give us uh, negative 10n squared, negative 5n, minus 1, minus 2. And so that's going to be uh, equals to 0. And that's going to be negative 10n squared, take away 5n, take away 3, like that. Now we're going to go calculate the b squared take away 4ac. So b is negative 5, do it in a bracket. a is negative 10, and c is negative 3. Go ahead, type all this in, and we get a negative answer, negative 95. So now if we go back to our map pack, oh, I don't know why I'm calling it a map pack, but the discriminant map, if your answer is negative, then straight away, you're just going to say non-real. You're not going to say anything about rational, one solution, real, none of that. The answer is just non-real. Okay, so we're just going to, whoops, where were we? Oh, that was a different example that I skipped because it's repetitive. Um, so the number of solutions, this is not applicable. Uh, this is going to be imaginary. This is not applicable. Now let's go get the answers anyway. Um, or, or, or let's try to go get the answers, okay? So what happens is that I'm going to take it from here now. So we're going to go use our formula. Um, x equals to minus b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. And so that's going to end up giving us negative, negative 5, because that's what b is. It's negative 5, um, plus or minus. 
Now the discriminant was negative 95, so I'm just going to fill that in, over uh, 2 times a, which is negative 10. Now here's the problem. You cannot have a negative inside a square root. Remember, we've looked at that um, when we were looking at complex quadratics. Um, so you can't have a negative inside a square root. So if you had to go type this in your calculator right now, it's going to give you an error. So I hope you've watched that lesson where I speak about what to do in these situations, because what we can do now is we can use imaginary numbers. Because remember that the square root of negative 1 is i. So what we're going to do now is I'm going to simplify this a little bit, so that's 5. Then I'm going to change this to the square root of 95 multiplied by the square root of negative 1, because that is the same as that. And then at the bottom, we're going to have negative 20. Okay, so I'm going to move over to the side now. So we're going to end up with x equals to 5 plus or minus the square root of 95, i. Because remember, the square root of negative 1 is i. And then at the bottom, we're going to have negative 20. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go type... Oh, no, we can't type it in on the calculator. Um because it's just going to give us an error. So what we're going to do then is we're just going to divide this negative 20 into this part and into that part. And so if we use the... So that's going to give us 5 over negative 20 plus minus square root 95i over negative 20. And so if we say 5 over negative 20, we get negative 1 over 4. So that's negative 1 over 4 plus minus, now I'm just going to type square root 95 over negative 20 on the calculator. Oh, and it just stays like that. Okay, and so there's our answers. We've got negative 1 over 4 plus, and then we've got the negative 1 over 4 minus. Okay, so we could technically say here number of solutions would have been 2, but I, what I meant was number of real solutions. There were no real solutions, but there were two imaginary solutions. So you see that when the answer inside the discriminant is a negative, you're not going to get um, you're not going to get rational or irrational. You're not going to get real solutions. You're only going to get imaginary solutions, okay? And here's our last example. So here I want you to go get the discriminant. So that's b squared take away 4ac. Whoops, why did I do that? Okay, so b is negative 10, a is 1, c is 25. Now, if you had to go work this out, you're going to get 0. Okay, so 0. So if we go back to our map, if you get a 0, then we call that rational, but we say equal, and there's only one solution. So the number of solutions is only one, and then it's real, and it's rational. Let's go get the answers so you can see what it looks like when you only have one solution. So I'm going to factorize this one. I'm not going to use the formula. You could use the formula if you wanted to, but this one factorizes really nicely. So if we look at, can you still remember how to factorize a trinomial? Well, we look at the 25 and we know that that's the same as 1 times 25 or 5 times 5. Ha! This 5 and this 5, I could definitely combine to make a minus 10 by saying minus 5, minus 5. And so then what I do is I make my two brackets and I say minus 5 and minus 5. I put an x over here and an x over here. And so the, can you see that these two brackets are exactly the same? And so I say x minus 5 is equal to 0. Therefore, x is equal to 5. There is only one answer. Whereas in the previous examples, there were um, two answers. See, 1, 2. In this one, 1, 2. But in this example, there was only um, one answer, and that is x is equal to 5.